Get ready to hear some noise tonight. You're just seconds away from Let's Go Blues Radio. No doubt about it, eh? You're listening to Kurt, Gil, and Jeff on Let's Go Blues Radio, the original St. Louis Blues hockey fan podcast. Take it away, boys. Come on, St. Louis hockey fans, stand up and cheer. The Blues are back strong. This is our year. It's the Blues turn now. I'll write it and we'll do it long. Yeah, it's the Blues turn now. <laughs> that Al McKenna slap shot. You know we can't lose. We are St. Louis, the home of the Blues. Come on, St. Louis. <laughs> Let's do that hockey. Come on, St. Louis! All over the hockey universe, the note is the news. Everybody's digging on the St. Louis. Happy holidays and Merry Christmas, and welcome to Season 7, Episode 27 of Let's Go Blues Radio, the original St. Louis Blues Hockey Podcast. We're live on Wednesday, December 19th, 2018. This is franchise episode number 160 all the time. I'm your host, Kurt Price, and Bill Day is the lone co-pilot tonight as Jeff Ponder is on assignment, which means he's busy. <clears throat> he's playing the game. He's he, playing. He's, play, he's getting that experience that qualifies him to talk about the game because <laughs> he plays the game. Yeah, so you don't get ripped on by other former players who have other shows on different broadcast outlets. <laughs> um. So this show, you know, shouldn't be as long-winded as uh, that, uh, past shows. <laughs> right. I <laughs> and, think the title of tonight's show is <laughs> something along the lines of uh, the shortest show we've had because Ponder wasn't here. <laughs> uh, at the very least, it'll be a hell of a lot more fun. So <clears throat> he may join us later and, and ruin the fun, but uh, probably not. Our goal is to not allow that to happen. <laughs> to do that, we have to be fast. <laughs> we love uh, you, Jeff. Uh, uh, to uh, interact with us uh, or the show on social media, you can follow us on Twitter, uh, at LGB Radio. Send us your tweets, and we'll read them on the air. Uh, my Twitter handle is at Kurt Price. Bill's is at Billy Blue Note. And Jeff says at jponder94. Also, follow us on Instagram. Like us on Facebook. And the website is letsgoblues.com. Uh, and if you uh, if we do wrap this show up in a hurry, maybe we'll open up the show to uh, for listeners to join us um, to uh, sound off about whatever you'd like to sound off about. So stay tuned for that if that happens. Um, and it might. Uh, please check out the Let's Go Blues.com shop and consider buying a reasonably priced shirt, mug, or sticker. All proceeds go back into supporting the show. Uh, we have a new shirt available uh, for all you Chris Pronger supporters. It's a retire number 44 shirt. So uh, give that a look. Again, it's at letsgoblues.com. What do you think? Of course, we wait until Ponder's not on the show before announcing that. Right. <laughs> his, Consider it was his brain child. His favorite, show, his favorite player, and yes, his idea. So that was, uh, I, we, I heard that, and I'm like, well, that's, that's getting made. That's, yeah. that's, a, that's a no-brainer. So, and it's not just a, it's, it's, I mean, it's true, and the Pronger's number should be retired. I don't sooner or later i would assume yeah maybe it'll happen at the end of this year when we've traded everybody away and they need people <laughs> they to come into the building be, yeah i think that's what they're waiting for well that's honestly. kind of what they did with uh, the mckinnis retirement because that was back in the days when there was that yeah. team was shit oh yeah that was the year i was season ticket holder <laughs> <laughs> um official beers of uh oh well, well before we do the beers i want to say real quick that we do have a couple of giveaways coming away coming soon uh, a couple of cool, neat things to give away. Um, we've got a, uh, a uh, Tarasenko uh, Funko Pop figure to give away. Oh, kind of like this one. Actually, exactly like this one. Not this exact one, but uh, if you can see it on the camera there. Uh, but, you know, new one in box. And then... Uh, pon- mint in box. Mint in box. And mint condition. And then uh, Ponder has a uh, signed, autographed copy by Fern- Bernie Federico and... I believe both uh, Furco and Rutherford. Yes. Um, of uh, Furco's new book, My Blues Note. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, I, I will you know, just uh, listen. Stay tuned to the show, and uh, uh, and Mr. Ponder will decide what he's going to do and what we're going to have you guys do for uh, for that giveaway. 
Official beers of episode 160, Bill. Um, oldie but a goodie for me. I uh, have this at least once a year on the show. Uh, it is now a year-round uh, offering by Founders. It is Backwoods Bastard Barrel-Aged Scotch Ale. Part of their the ongoing barrel age series um, was extremely happy to hear that they began to offer this year round. Um, lots of uh, lots of outlets here sell founders. If you haven't had it, you listen to the show for a long time. You know I love anything from founders. There are a few that I haven't liked, but for the most part, everything is great. This is this is uh, hard to go wrong. Very boozy. Very high in alcohol content. What's the what's the ABV? It is in the eleven range. Mm. I want to say you're doubling up what I got. Yeah. Um, so uh, the official description: it is eleven percent even. Official description: expect lovely warm smells of single malt scotch, uh, oaky bourbon barrels, smoke, sweet caramel, and roasted malts. Uh, it's a bit of earthy spice and a scintilla of dark fruit. It's a kickback sipper made to excite the palate. Well, I don't disagree with any of that. That's a, that's I wouldn't have put it that way, but I don't disagree with any of it. That's a mouthful. <laughs> that's what she said. Oh, well, um, my beer of the show is the uh, bananas foster milk stout by four hands. Um, a seasonal limited edition release. They sold out of this in a hurry. Um, and uh, I was uh, fortunate enough to be given a bottle of this by a friend of mine. So this is uh, uh, very uh, much appreciated and it's very good. So, and it's at like half the ABV of yours. Uh, it's five and a half. Mm, nice. So I need to drink. Oh, how, many, how many ounces? What's your bottle? So Mine's 16? 12. 12? So. Oh, I'll see. <laughs> if you're just doing mass quantities. Um, I've got, I've got you on alcohol. Mine's a 22. Yeah. Yours is a bomber. So actually no, we're about the same. Yeah. Um, but good stuff. Four hands. I love four hands. One of my favorite breweries. Good stuff. As I pause the show or take a drink. Yes. A local favorite. <laughs> mm-hmm. Ponder's favorite. Yeah. I mean, it's, I, it's probably my favorite brewery too. I, I, I mean that and center ice like them a lot. Yep. Um, Today in Blues History, courtesy of the at STL Blues History Twitter account, uh, 1929, December 19th, 1929, Ron Caron was born. The professor would have turned 89 today. And, you know, the, the STL Blues History guy, he's just got so much stuff. I mean, just, I, I, I'm, I'm, I've never seen his collection in person, but uh, uh, Ponder has, and yeah. he's just brags about it. But uh, he, Shared a picture of, of I assume he has this because it says uh, shared by STL Blues History uh, as a you know watermark. It's Ron Caron's ID badge, <laughs> and <laughs> we're working with the blues. Right, I know. Yeah, I know, I know what it's yeah, for, but it's, I just right. It's it's insane that a that, private citizen has that, that. He just has this, and it's just I mean, how did you come across the uh, Ron Caron ID, ID badge? And, and the Ron Caron stationery is you know it's probably not quite as hard to come by, but um, yeah, yeah, it's it's on the stationery uh, STL Blues, the old logo. Uh, from the desk of Ron Caron, and he's got his ID badge. <laughs> My question is, does it smell like meat? Oh, on the like, the, you know, it's got to be cooked meat, meat on the burner, right? Cooking meat, yeah, sizzling meat is on the burner. It's always meat on the burner. Usually from Calgary. <laughs> he had a lot of dealings with Calgary. Yeah, some good ones with Calgary. Yeah, Brett Hall. Um. And they won a cup with those players we gave them, though. So, yes, they yeah. did. Yeah. Uh, 1975, December 19th, 1975. Ron Schock was born. No, nope, that isn't correct. Ron what? Schock was very much oh, alive at ACA. That, I'm sorry. <laughs> he turned <laughs> 75th birthday. Today. You didn't let me finish. Ron Schock was born 75 years before today. He <laughs> so turned 75 today. So what does 1975 have to do with it? Kurt? I don't know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll give you a pass. <laughs> uh, he scored one of the biggest goals in Blues history, scoring in double overtime versus Minnesota to put the Blues into the Stanley Cup Finals in 1968. Which uh, is pretty amazing, considering he was born in 1975. Right. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where I got the 75 from. 
I guess he, well, he, he turned 25. I guess I, yeah, no one's perfect. Shut up. <laughs> I said I'd give you a pass and you didn't. I'm a dick. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Uh, 1996, I think. <laughs> Blues fire head coach and GM Mike Keenan and team president Jack Quinn. A great, great day in Blues history. Yeah, it was funny because the 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 his Twitter account uh, attached a news, newspaper article, a clipping that uh, had a couple of folks that were interviewed, like the day it happened or the day after it happened. And uh, he, uh, a couple of folks were obviously you know in favor of it, but there were a couple of folks that weren't, and they were like all supportive of Keenan. It's kind of weird to read that because I almost assume. I mean, I guess I mean I. It seems like everybody hated Keenan and everybody went out of town, but I'll be damned. And it was, it was an article by Rutherford too. I'm like, wow, he's been right for blues for a long time. I didn't realize it was that long ago. I mean, he was. That had to be during his intern days. Maybe. I mean, go back to Jeff's. Uh, maybe it's 90s. Jeff's interview with him. Yeah. He was. That was had to be early on because he covered the Rams more than he covered the Blues. And this was so. This was '96. So I mean, I mean, he he did write this article so that was uh when he was at home. 22 years ago so geez um but you know no longer writes for the post so no, writes for the athletic and he does, does a damn good job a damn good job and he's a it's a better situation for him and i think the fans get better info much better info absolutely agree with that yeah so it's a win-win situation for everyone and he's a very nice guy he is a nice guy very nice very humble um, there needs to be a plaque inside the Enterprise Center with uh, the date that Keenan was fired. Yeah. So fans yeah. can get their picture taken next to it. <laughs> yeah. Those of us that survived that era, uh -huh. the Adam Creighton, Brian Noonan, bringing in everybody from other organizations. Glenn Anderson. Yeah. Tekenen. Tekenen was a Gretzky. Beauty, though. I liked. I love Tekenen. <laughs> <laughs> The worst interview in NHL history, but <laughs> damn, they were fun. I looked for that that famous well, that, I don't know if yeah. that famous clip, that that clip of him uh, trying to explain a, a goal after the game, and uh, you can't understand a damn word he's saying, but he's excited. He's so super excited. <laughs> and uh, I I had it, and I don't know what happened to it. I'll have to look for it and, and post it. It was hilarious. I, so I had always heard about the Keenan departure that it was it was pretty angry like he lost his shit and they had to escort him out he didn't see this coming I mean how could you not jeez uh step on my toe step Stefan Mateau which uh LSGA electronics in the YouTube chat said uh, step on my toe which was always it's still funny right today it's not yeah. it's never not funny right and, and his kid uh Stefan step on my toe uh junior like played for the uh, Devils organization. Is he a junior? Is this the same name? I, I'm pretty sure it was. No, you can't let that name uh, die. Yeah. <laughs> you got to keep that going. No. <laughs> uh, Hawaii uh, Blues fan uh, joins us in the YouTube chat. Uh, hey, guy. Um, his YouTube handle is uh, Hawaii Blues fan guy. So uh, he said, thanks for cheering me up today. Wow. We had a nice exchange on, on uh, Twitter today. That was kind of funny. Yeah. So. I, I didn't. I didn't pour any much on the Twitter uh, on account of the works today. Yeah, he's uh, he's got a birthday party coming up at uh, uh, Blue Note Sports Bar and Grill. Oh yeah, yeah. So and uh, you, tw tw uh, you can post that date there on the YouTube chat if you want to. There, guy, and we'll announce it. Well, well, yeah. If anybody wants to go to a Hawaii Blues fans' uh, birthday party at uh, the Blue Note Sports Bar and Grill in Maryland Heights, Missouri. It's coming up. I think it's uh, it's December thirtieth. He says, "There you go, Sunday. It's a Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday." And be I think there, he, be there, be there. I think he says he'll be doing his uh show from there, his live show from there. So, and he has a he has a YouTube show that he uh gives his uh it's like a short fifteen minute show. Yeah, we'll have to see how he works the magic of being in yeah. two places at once. <laughs> His on the scene, was it on the scene reporter or uh, yeah. <laughs> on the, no, it's not on the scene. It's a roving reporter. Yeah, roving reporter. <laughs> That's funny. We got to learn how to do that. Yeah, I know. I, well, at 3 p.m. he says. Um, 1987. December 19th, 1987. Doug Gilmore was part of the fastest two goals scored in NHL history. 
Uh, two seconds in the St. Louis Blues seven to five win versus the Boston Bruins. Two seconds. It involved a, a empty, empty net goal. goal. Yeah, the, yeah. the other team scored. They pulled them one and. Wasn't that just eclipsed this year? Uh, the Montreal scored one second. Did they? Yeah. Well, well, you, are you saying that STL Blues history is incorrect on something? Either that or they tied it. Okay. They, I'm, pretty, did... I'm pretty sure that because it, it, How... Montreal not being involved with a record was pretty crazy. And they. How did they score one second? Two, two wasn't one second. Off draw, empty net goal. Yeah, from, from center. Yeah, two empty net goals, I believe. I I'll hear, do some research. I, I didn't hear about that. Vamp for me. <laughs> All right. Uh, December 19th, 1924. Doug Harvey, who became the first St. Louis Blues player inducted into the Hall of Fame, the Hockey Hall of Fame, born 94 years ago today, December 19th, 1924, in Montreal. Yes. Go back. Probably the second greatest defenseman of his generation, best defensive defenseman of his generation. But there was a guy named Bobby Orr that was right, right. a little bit better. Uh, Bobby Plager was uh, interviewed on KMY. They, they, I guess they aired the interview tonight on KMWX. Uh, and uh, he was saying that uh, Doug Harvey was a huge influence on, on him. Yeah. Yeah. He was, he was a cornerstone of the Montreal Canadiens of the, the 60s and 70s. I mean, absolute beast of a defenseman and uh the fact that he played here um you know it's it's a it's a little bit you know to uh, misleading to say first blues player inducted because oh, yeah, I, I, he, he was the first player to have played with the blues to make it to the hall of fame don't take it up with me i'm just passing along information <laughs> isn't, isn't federico widely regarded as the first like true blue to make the hockey hall of fame yes i mean that like tenured blue Yes, yeah. our good buddy, Bernie Federico. Our good buddy, Bernie Federico. Um, so Montreal, uh, Ty Dome, or Ty Dome, Max Domi, uh, they uh, they did it in two seconds. So okay, they, the tie. they tied it. It was uh, just... Uh, um, Same kind of thing? Yeah. So, but there, see, this that's interesting because this is saying that the, they hold the record that was set by the St. Louis Eagles. That was three, two goals in three seconds, March 12th, 1935, in the Minnesota so, Wild, January 21st, 2004. Now, was that two goals by the same team? Because the the, the, the Gilmore one was a two goals by, you know, one by each team. Fastest two goals in NHL history was the Gilmore record. Yeah, uh, it is, this does give that same qualifier. Team. Okay, same team. so that's, that's the difference. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's still a record. Right. No, nobody scored two Faster. goals in right. one second. Right. That seems impossible. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Two yeah. seconds seems almost it, impossible. It would have to be a team walked off the ice, the ref dropped the puck, and somebody <laughs> took a slap shot. Which, which, I mean, that didn't happen to us when we played, but one time I was, uh, I had a face-off in the offensive zone, took a face-off, and the other team wouldn't refuse to line up properly. Mm -hmm. And, the, and, ref the, dropped the, and the ref dropped the puck, and their goalie wasn't ready. He dropped it. I corralled it. Wrist shot real quick. Upper glove beat Patrick Roy. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you did. Beat Patrick Roy. He was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he was. <laughs> he was just standing there and the other team wasn't lined up. I don't know why they weren't lining up, but uh, he was calling them over and they were slow and he dropped it anyway. And he goes, fuck you. And I, I scored. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're a bunch of dicks. Yeah. We, we did play. We didn't get along with them at all. No. We, 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 we did play against a goalie. His name was Patrick Roy. He pronounced it Roy. Which is kind of funny. He pronounced it. He Roy. pronounced it Roy. I think we yeah. called him Wa. Yeah, we. Who who didn't? Well, I'm sorry, but if you're a goalie who wears 33, yeah. and <laughs> right. and your name is spelled that way, right. you just adopt it. I don't know. I... So uh, speaking of our good friend Bernie Federico, uh, uh, Jeff. Bill and I, uh, the entire uh, crew here, we we went to uh, we attended the Brennan, Bernie, and Bruce uh, event at Kirkwood Station last Thursday, and uh, absolutely fantastic time. Beautiful uh, night. Oh, so glad we had the opportunity to go to this. Um, Charlie Brennan from KMWX interviewed the uh, Blues great Bernie Furtico at the uh, ticketed event at, at Kirkwood Station Brewing. They were promoting Furtico's book uh, that Rutherford uh, wrote and called uh, My Blues Note. 
and they sold copies there and Faruka was signing autograph copies and they uh, lots of good stories were told during the interview uh, lasted about 45 minutes. However, the best time of the night for us was after it was over. Yes. Was, uh, I mean, we had, we had some beers and we, we had a little bit of food and, and uh, listening to the event was fantastic. But, uh, uh, after the place cleared out yep. and we're still hanging out there, we're like the only table left there. And, yep. uh, cause we're waiting cause, uh, Ponder motioned to Rutherford to come over cause he was talking to somebody and, uh, cause you know, Ponder knows Jr. And from so, his days in the media, right from his days of the media. And so, uh, we're waiting for him to come over. And then, uh, when Rutherford comes over, Federico walks over. And they both kind of pull up a chair about the same time and they just sit down. And I'm like, oh, here we go. Yeah. Here we go. It's, it's our table of four people and uh, Rutherford and Federico. And I don't know, it must have been 30 minutes or so. Oh, we're yeah. just at least we were ta- just talking hockey. Yeah. Um, I, t- I just got some stories that weren't in the book. <laughs> yep. Great stories. Some st- yeah, stories that uh, were too embarrassing for some folks and I yeah. uh, didn't want to put them in there. And yeah. um, there was a, there was a, uh, story about uh, Brian Sutter and a foursome in golf. Yeah. He uh, <laughs> basically had uh, one of the foursome shit in the hole for because the, the foursome behind him was giving him some shit, and uh, they shit in the hole, put the flag back in, and left and went to the next hole. Um, yeah, it, <laughs> you haven't lived until you've had a semantic discussion about defecating. No, with a hockey right. hall of famer. Yeah, and uh, uh, <laughs> uh, there was a story about you know, initiation for the rookies and, uh, oh. getting bodies shaved and, um, roughly yeah. <laughs> they weren't, they weren't nice about it. What was it? He said that they used on Wade Babbage. It was like a sheep shear or something. Oh, they, yeah. And well, <laughs> and, uh, uh, they, they, they shaved your entire body. I mean, you were right. kind of naked, right? And it wasn't, it wasn't just, no, it wasn't know, just your it. face and your legs. No. And it was, it was everything. I was going to say it wasn't just your balls, right? Well, and uh, what do they what do they say they put on the on they've like doused you in something afterwards first cold water and then uh the equivalent of icy hot yes icy hot or ben gay or whatever the hell yeah. it was oh my god and they said that burned so bad right oh jeez oh, they and were not delicate about the process no they were i mean they weren't i mean they're hockey players and yeah. they're you know fighting the guys by sh- uh, shaving the guys by fighting you to get away yeah. heard some andy murray stories that were <laughs> kind of funny um, which, you know, uh, there's so much universal hatred. For them. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, yeah, just, and I'm glad to see it doesn't, it goes past the fans. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe, and maybe the best conversation, um, was when JR made fun of Federico because Canadians say having a whatever yeah, and to the same thing, Americans will say taking a whatever. Yeah. And, but, and Federico's and, <laughs> Federico says, yeah, Americans will say taking a shit and Canadians will say having a shit. And then we talked about the difference between the two phrases and how having a shit is probably a little more accurate than taking a shit. That may have been the highlight of my year. That was amazing. That conversation. We laughed like like middle school boys the (laughs) whole way home after that conversation. It was it was a ton of fun To, to see Federico. Uh, try to figure out why Americans say taking a shit and to see him act like they're like he's physically lifting shit out of a toilet with his hands <laughs> and then have a confused look on his face and say, why? Wh- what does that mean? <laughs> it's so funny. Oh, God. Yeah. And I'm like, this, and I, I, I looked at Bill and I'm thinking, I'm like, this is happening right now. This is uh, weird. We, we're not really this drunk. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is, this is, yeah, this is something that, uh, that this is like a, a dream where I'm drunk and I'm, yeah, all, weird it was yeah so much so much fun um yeah i mean it was a surreal moment for me because i i had my back to to the stage uh at that point and you know i rutherford was standing behind ponder who's to my right so i didn't even see federco coming until like i i look over my shoulder and he's pulling up a chair right next to me (laughs) like you know, surreal moment in my life. And he was, he was my favorite offensive player. I only went slightly fanboy on him and actually probably insulted him by saying Mike Liu was the reason I started playing hockey instead of him. But um, it was, yeah, it was awesome. Just what a, what a great 
down to earth, like, you know, just sat down and talked with us. Like we're some of the boys, you mm-hmm. know, just great evening. And, uh, yeah, the, uh, the book full of so many great stories and definitely it's, it's gotta be on the list of things you have to own. If you are a lifelong St. Louis blues right. fan. Yep. And they, uh, they aired that interview on cam Wex on Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, I think at 10 o'clock. And I, I would imagine that they've got, they've probably got to have a, a download or a podcast of it. Yeah. That would, I'll, yeah, I'll have to see if, uh, if it's on their side, if it's not, I'll ask Brennan if he, if it's available. Yeah. Cause I actually ponder, uh, actually asked one of the questions, uh, on the show, uh, that they were taping. So about his, uh, Ask Furco to describe his first goal in the NHL, which was kind of cool. Yeah, great question. Yep, and Jeff's definitely a uh, a former media guy. He's got the savvy. Um, let's see. Spoon Fudge said in the YouTube chat, uh, "Did you say you guys? Did you say last week you had eighty one thousand downloads and listens per episode? Is that true?" Um, yep. That uh, and the vast majority of them are on the uh, podcast. Uh, we get a handful of listens uh, on the uh, YouTube, the live, the webcast here, but uh, the, the, almost almost all of those come from uh, the uh, podcast and the uh, subscribers who listen uh, via that way. So, how many do we have? Uh, subscribers? Mm-hmm. I don't know the number. Um, but uh, and how many downloads do we have? Oh, last uh, well, when I announced it uh, last week, I talked about last week. It was, uh, we had 81,000 over the previous 30 days, 81,000 listens. 81,000 listens. Over the last 30 days. Man. And we, we get about, you know, 3,000 a day. That That is... A little less. Astounding to me. Like, we're, we're just a few guys who like to talk hockey and... I know. <laughs> people want to listen to I us. I know. Well, I mean... We love it. You know, I mean, I, I, I listen to a handful of... of podcasts uh you know every week so i mean it's it's available to everybody in the world so i mean it's yeah. i mean it's I, not i my whole morning routine is around like four or five different podcasts mm-hmm. and so yeah it's 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 amazing to think that somebody wants to go out and download <laughs> something where i'm talking and you're talking i, I know that's I, we love it thank you guys uh sp- Spoon Fudge also says, oh, "Why don't you have a sponsor?" <laughs> That's a long story. <laughs> we had a sponsor. We had a couple uh, years ago. Yeah, before I joined. Before you joined, and it was a, a sponsor for a, a web app, and then we had a, a, a the Luna Sports Bar and Grill were a sponsor for uh, two, three years, something like that. Back when we used to do trivia. Yeah, we did trivia. Um, but uh, there's there's a number of reasons why we why we don't right now, but maybe we will in the future. I mean, it's we've talked about it a lot actually. Hmm. It's kind of like going pro, <laughs> yeah, right? I don't want to give up the amateur status. I want to yeah. qualify for the Olympics. <laughs> yep. Not that that's a thing anymore, right? They have professional athletes. In the yeah, Olympics. I don't know how that works. Yeah. I mean, they, they, it just depends on the sport, right? I mean, you're participating in. Yeah, it's got to. I don't know. Okay, uh, so uh, last couple games: uh, Sunday, December sixteenth versus Calgary. That was a fun one. I lost seven to two. Uh, Calgary gets four goals in the first period, including Matthew Kachuk's first career goal against the Blues. Uh, <laughs> Bennington relieves Allen to start the second period. Uh, not a, I, I don't, I don't even, I don't. There's so much to talk about in the last game that I don't really want to spend a ton of time on this game at all. But yeah, uh, Bennington got some work. Um, looked fine, I guess. Um, didn't I, I don't know. He allowed a uh, what three goals, two goals, three goals, so. two. Two. He only gave up two because the other was empty net. That's right. So that, that's right. They do. I forgot they pulled the goal in this thing. Five minutes to go. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, why not? That was, you know what? I was like, I'm watching it. I'm like, well, okay. All right, we're pulling the goalie. Okay, something interesting to watch now. <laughs> we don't need no goalie. We don't need a goalie. Yeah. Um, I I did not make time to watch this game. It's a Sunday afternoon game, foregone conclusion for me. I was not surprised uh, when... You know, later that night, I asked uh, you and Ponder, what, "Is it worth watching?" Ponder's like, "Nope." <laughs> Immediate response, "Nope, nope." Uh, that's that, this was a. If you missed this one, this was a great one to watch. Uh, the condensed game, yeah, on, uh, which I did tonight. Right. 
That was a, this is a great yeah. game for the condensed version. Yeah, it's just yeah, just terrible all around bad play. I mean, uh, we we had one. I mean, we won. Right. The, 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 an, this is what's frustrating. This is this this team is a mess to try and figure out. And everyone's saying this, and it's like we said this a couple weeks ago or more, a few weeks ago that I, it, this it's a broken record with this team. Every time we we do a show, uh, they're 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 impossible to figure out. They'll look fantastic one game against a good team. And then and then they'll look like complete ass against a bad team. Yeah. And and and, they, and that's you know, that happens every now and with every team. Uh, you know, every once in a while a bottom feeder beats a, a good team and that happens. Or uh, you know, vice versa, a great team loses to a uh, a bad team. But so that's fine. That happens. But this is happening a lot. Every other game is is this story. So it just, I don't, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't, because it doesn't make any sense to me. But uh, coming off two wins, you're thinking, okay, well, got two wins, uh, two pretty good wins, um, and then we'll we'll see if we can get three in a row for the first time this season. And uh, I don't, I, they've won two in a row three times this season. And I think it was posted on Twitter. The combined score of they they, they haven't won the game after winning, obviously the, the third game, right? Yeah, the, the third game combined score was like something we've lost like sixteen like sixteen to five or something in goals. That's the goal differential, uh, something like that, fifteen to five or thir- sixteen to five. It's ridiculous. So we just get blown out in these games. And um, I'd love to tell you why, by but I mean. If I knew, if I knew why, and I would, I would, and I was right about it, you know, I'd, I'd you qualify I'd it, for the head coach. I'd, of the I'd have Blues. a job in the NHL, right? Uh, but it's, it's just, no, it's, it's one of those just completely dumbfounding things. I mean, they've been doing it all season. Yeah, and, and you know, simple-minded folk like myself try to look at the calendar and say, well, if that's Sunday afternoon, they don't play well on Sunday afternoon. Friday, no. Friday night, they win on Friday night. They can't lose on Fridays. Yeah. And they can't win on Sundays. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it's just, it's just an arbitrary right. weirdness. Right. It's it's completely, you know, I, I don't want to say random, but I, I, your your word was correct. Arbitrary. Yeah. Just, I, it's like, oh, and it's one of those it's one of those stats with like three quarters way through the season that you'll see. Oh, the Blues are like uh, only have two wins on a Wednesday. It's like, oh, that's that's just a fluky weird stat that doesn't mean anything. But I mean, there's a couple of them now. It's Fridays you can't lose, and Sundays you can't win. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not a lot of bright spots for, for the blues in the game. Um, you know, I, I, I hope that's not the only time, not that I, I think Jake Allen has been playing very well lately, mm-hmm. but I would like to see Bennington get a shot at a couple of starts. Um, I, I do well, not yeah. think that the, the first goal he gave up was completely not his fault. Absolutely. Perfect shot by Johnny Gaudreau. I mean, on a stick, off a stick, half a second, chip shot over the shoulder. Yeah, that was the over shoulder goal. Yeah, just, that was. I think I tweeted out that was a that was I. He is amazing. Yeah. That that was a fantastic yeah. shot. This is yeah. The and the the other goal that he gave up. What are you gonna do when you got a defenseman sitting on top of you? <laughs> <laughs> that happens a lot. Yeah. Um, and you know Calgary. Um, they're uh, tied for first in the West now. Right. They are. <laughs> They're, with Nashville how, and Winnipeg, they're tied for first. Right. How, how does they, that happen? Right. How they parlayed fucking Dougie Hamilton into all the former Carolina Hurricanes that are playing like insane on that team. I mean, Noah Hannafin, uh, Elias Lindholm, uh, and even um, who was the, the third line, fourth line checker guy that um, set up the Gujaro goal. With this four check, oh, I, don't um, know. I had the box score up and I closed yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> it's it. I don't know. They, I something tells me that Carolina got fleeced. So, um, um, enough about that game. Yeah, I don't. I mean, it's it is what it is. I mean, uh, Cal. I mean, Cal. And they, the Calgary's they lost their last game, but uh, they've won eight of ten, and they're on fire. Yeah, so I'm, team in the West. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, Winnipeg's also eight and two, eight and two in the last ten. Um, and the Blues are uh, you know after uh, well we can get to their record in a minute. Um, if you want to, yeah, you know. Uh, so uh, Tuesday, uh, last night's game versus Edmonton. Uh, I think with the way things were going this season, the <laughs> the the crappy loss to Calgary, 
I really, you, we we really have no idea what Blues team is going to show up nowadays. But um, uh, I was I would have had I would have not been surprised if they won this game five nothing. I would have not been surprised if they lost this game seven to one. Yeah. Uh, I, I it, it, who knows? And they showed up against Edmonton. They decided they wanted to play today, right. and it was uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right. I, right. I I'd love it's, to. The Blues are Forrest Gump's box of chocolates. <laughs> uh, Just absolutely I, and I, unpredictable, and whatever it is, you you roll with it. Uh, yeah, Bob Rakowski in the YouTube chat says, "I forget the numbers, but our record is better against teams in the playoff position than teams not in the spot." Yeah, I saw that too. So weird, and it's, and it's not even close. Yeah. Uh, we we really struggle against teams out of the playoffs, and we've actually played with a pretty good record we're like three or four games over against teams uh in the playoffs something like that which makes absolutely no sense right uh, and that and then that, that almost tells me that's it's it's just something uh mental or attitude or we don't have to bring it as hard tonight because this team is not in the playoffs well you know what you're not either so yeah, it's I think that stat comes more into focus uh, for teams that have been in a playoff position at some point and are struggling to explain why they're no longer in a playoff position uh, as opposed to the Blues who have not been a 500 team this year. No. It's always funny when you hear some uh, Blues fans say, oh, we should beat this team. They're not any good. They're ahead of us in the standings. Right. <laughs> it's, you, I, you can't say that this year. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're the team that's not as good. So right. <laughs> we are that team this year. They should be saying that about us, right. which is... Uh, well, except for Chicago. Right. Uh, there's a few teams below us. I get it. But but uh, these teams that the Blues fans are saying, oh, they're not very good. We should beat them. Yeah, they're like four points ahead of us. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But... Uh, I I enjoyed this game, and not just because the Blues won, obviously, duh. But uh, this game was entertaining. I it was uh, uh there was action, good goaltending, both ends. Oh yeah. Um, close game, tight for uh you know for most of the game until you know midway through the third. Yeah. Um, Perron's goal was beautiful. God. <laughs> that wrist shot, man. I mean, I. Is there a better wrist shot in the NHL than that? He well, I mean, he pulled it out. I mean, I'm not saying he's got the best best wrist shot in the NHL, but you show me a better wrist shot than the one he made mm -hmm. than that first goal. That is amazing. Yeah, just um, perfectly, perfectly placed off the post. Yeah. Um, Rolled the wrists and let it go. Unless the goal is already there, he's not stopping it. Yeah. Um, and uh, you could tell that Perron was proud of it. He knew it because he was smiling the whole damn time. Of he's lining up for the faceoff and he's just smiling ear to ear. Uh, that yep. was hilarious. Yep. The that's, beauty. That's one to remember. Yeah, he knew it. Uh, I'm gonna pull 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 Yarvi, pull pull <laughs> Yarvi, Jesse I'll, pull Yarvi, pull Yarvi, pull pull Jajarvi, pull Yarvi. Uh, the Oilers got the uh, got even in the second period on a goal by pull Yarvi. Uh, it was a pass on a cycling play out of the corner. Uh, to Payarvi, Poliarvi. I almost want to say, I, I, right. I, I, I want to say you Payarvi. Keep, you keep going to Payarvi. I know. He um, played there. Yeah. And can you imagine if they were on the same line? <laughs> oh, I would feel bad for the announcers. Um, but he let a one timer go. Beat Allen. Uh, Bortuzzo looked like he screened him on the play. Um, beat him short side. I don't like short side goals from that angle, but he was screened. And, uh, so I'm not going to throw a stink about it. Yeah. Um, so and the Blues challenged this goal. This and this is this is great. I uh, the this game was this game was kind of a microcosm of the last couple of weeks or so for the Blues with or last week I guess week and a half right for and, and that it contributed to the entertainment factor of right the game. right and all these all these uh, questionable like having to go to the rule book and and right. uh, reviews and that are like blues, unusual right the the go back to the the Colorado game. Mm -hmm. uh, Friday night that uh, they they make the complete wrong call. Yes, you know, yes, the wrong call with the stick. You uh, and and the NHL didn't. You know, I I don't think they came out and apologized, but it 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 was brought that was, out through the media that it was wrong. Right. That was after our last show, wasn't it? It was. Oh, okay, so we didn't. We'll talk about that. that. Yeah. I don't. I don't have the notes. I forgot about that. Yeah. I thought I was for some reason I was thinking it was before our last show. We'll yeah. talk about it here in a second. Um, because I have some things to say about that. I mean, so, right. but anyway, this play, this was the Blues challenge's goal, and uh, this was great. 
um, they were saying that Edmonton was offside. And uh, so they reviewed it. And when they showed the replay, and I'm thinking initially, I'm thinking, oh, pff, offside. And I'm, I wasn't even thinking about the, I was thinking this, this that's onside. What are they doing? This is, I mean, the, the, the guy uh, touches up, tags up, and they uh, he clears the zone and they come back in. And it was funny because Panger and uh, JK, they didn't want to, uh, they didn't want to criticize the decision to, to challenge, challenge right. because they were like, uh, literally on the other, like, mm, uh. right. <laughs> it's like, and, I'm and like, then, just say that you don't know why uh, uh, Barube challenged this play because it's obviously on side. However, and so they, they couldn't do that, which is weird. Um, I hate they, that. They would. They wouldn't. That. They won't criticize, which I get to a certain degree. But come on. Um, but then all of a sudden, I was. I'm sitting there. On one of the last reviews, I'm like, I look up at the at the bench and I see that the guy's uh, leg is on the ice. Who was it? Um, I don't know who it was. Legs was, was still, skate was still on the ice. I'm like, oh, oh, no, they're talking. Uh, that's why. That's mm-hmm. what the review is. And then like 20 seconds later. They're things like, like things like, oh, that's <laughs> the, the, maybe they're checking that guy out. And I'm like, yes, because I'm yelling at the TV. I'm like, no, I'm like an idiot, you know. I'm like, but uh, so then I'm like, okay, this is offside, clearly offside. And I'm again, I like all everybody. It's like, oh, that's offside. Once you figure out, but no, hmm. because oh yeah, that's right. Because once he takes his leg off the ice and in the bench, he's cleared the zone. And then the players came in. No one had, had the possession of the puck until the skate was up. So I'm like, okay. Okay, fine. So they got the call right. However, I had a question for you, Bill, about this. There is a thing in the NHL, which no one's talked about that I've seen. There's a, there's a, there's a, or there used to be, I don't know if there still is, unfair line change where, they, where a team gains an advantage. So, that- so and here's the, so and then what I'm asking about this is because. Edmonton gained an advantage by, and it was, and it comes into play when there's someone in the zone and outside the zone, and there's an offside play and someone clears it. Uh, and so, but anyway, so they gained an advantage based on where the door was and the player left the ice. So, and I was thinking today, I'm like, does that, would that come into play as far as an unfair, is it, is the unfair line change still a thing? I always thought it was it was used for the you you have the guy jump on two seconds so that get you get that. back in the play. I get that that it, it's going the the play is going the other way, right? Like on the rush, right? Like if a, if a guy jumps off the bench and then skates, you know, and basically it's it, you're using your five foot leeway, or whatever you get. Um, you're on the border and you use the length of the bench to basically get an advantage, right? Mm-hmm. I, I, that could have been argued here. The length of the bench gave them an advantage. Okay, I'm not, I'm not going to think yeah. about it, but no, I, I thought it, about it today. It is. You're right. It's it's something that used to be a thing, but really isn't much of a thing. I haven't and seen I've, it. I don't think I've ever seen it called in that situation. I haven't either. It's like you said. It's always been on the rush. It's always been like, but I don't. Uh, yeah, I just I, I thought about today whether that would actually technically be a thing or not, but I, I'm guessing no. But. Um, just made me think. So anyway, the the officials got the call right. Yeah, I think. I mean, yeah. You know, what do you think? What do you think? Okay, you just you disagree. No. Okay. Because he he effectively cleared the zone. Right. Right. By by lifting his skate off the ice. I I, I, yeah. I hated it. I I thought it was you know it was dumb and you know he should have been penalized for just taking his sweet ass time getting off the ice. How about a dumbass? Too many men on the ice penalty. You know that's. You know, yeah, I, but it doesn't, it doesn't qualify that. But the <laughs> the amount of penalties the Blues have gotten this year for too many men. I mean, we lead the league well, 10, 10 now. You you'd think that refs are looking for makeup calls, right? Well, if the guy that came on for him had played the puck, yeah, that I, I may guess. have been a thing. But yeah, um, uh, yeah. Well, so impacted the game, but not yeah, the outcome and blue. It's funny because. Um, you know, half of Blues Twitter was saying the Blues were screwed on the play, and so I, it's. I mean, that's one of the downfalls of reading social media during stuff like that. Is that so many people? I don't maybe 
hear the final explanation right. and they're just ranting and raving about the you know what the broadcaster said initially so and and Peng I think didn't ever really correct on that no no and so they're but they did later they did later they said they, I stand corrected right later in the broadcast later in the broadcast not right not, not on the play no because they, they didn't understand but it enough time. time for people to be right. like oh, we were oh wrong. yeah oh yeah. we were wrong must have been about 10 or 15 minutes later at least yeah, yeah. So there was all kinds of time for people to voice their displeasure on Twitter. <laughs> um, so then uh, Maroon's goal and the controversy surrounding that thing, that yeah. was, that was, that was, I anyway, so Thomas enters the zone, goes wide on a nice between the legs uh, uh, move on the defenseman, loses it as he uh, tries to kind of jam it in front. Tablet appears to cover the puck. Uh, and, you know, there's a scramble. You got Maroon and you got uh, Bozak poking away at it. Um, and just the live camera shot, you're thinking, okay, you know, it was covered, no big deal. And then the call comes down, they're not dropping the puck and they're going to review it. And I'm like, oh, okay, they're going to see if it crossed the line. Okay. So, and then they show the replay. And then when we finally found where the, where the puck was, mm. it was under the, under his pad on the edge of his pad under the M on CCM. Right. But we didn't find that out in St. Louis till after the game. Well, they. Th- I thought they said it during the broadcast. I I didn't think they showed it during the broadcast. Okay. Well, I, I thought they I did. I didn't see it until um the Simon uh, the Cristiano. Oh no no no. The I saw I saw they said they showed on the broadcast where the puck was, not when it was in the goal. Mm. This was when it was. This was after the right. after the pad had come out of the goal. Right. And they said, and okay, there's where, the puck. Right. And so it, you're you're deducing right that exactly. You're like, okay, I know where the puck is. I know it was under his pad. That part of the pad was just way in the net. Uh, you know, common sense tells me it's a goal, but the camera angle they show us doesn't show the puck, actual physical puck. You can't see it in the net, right? Which we've seen before on plays. And so, uh, and then they go to they review it, and it takes a long time. And then they, after it was almost five minutes, right? And at some point, I think one of the Blues went over and said, just make a decision and <laughs> and you see Kyle Raymond the ref who's reviewing it saying they think they have a goal yeah like they, okay. it was something to that effect and so it went on another minute and then you know once we finally get to see the actual angle where they have it in it's clear as day that it's it's over the line and yeah oh and yeah apparently that was shown on the Edmonton feed but not the St. Louis feed. I don't think it was on the Edmonton feed because I, I the replay on NHL.com, the highlights, yeah. they have the Edmonton guys on there. And if they showed mm-hmm. it, they didn't show it till after the decision was made yeah. because they were like, oh, I don't agree with that call at all because there's no clear, uh, you unless they have a different angle, you know, you can't see the puck in the goal. And everybody knows the NHL has different different uh, different right. cameras to access. They didn't, but they didn't, I don't think they mentioned that. Um, so well, they were they were dead set wrong about that. Well, they that. kept saying, "Oh, the NHL has the you know the 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 ones embedded in the crossbar." Right. Yeah. But then we got to see that feed, and you couldn't tell shit. Right. No, you couldn't. That you can't. That's yeah. You had the camera that uh, showed it was uh, ice level almost camera at from, the blue line. At the blue line. Right. That it was zoomed it looked in. like it would would have been a you know a Zapruder film by the <laughs> backup goalie. Yeah. And it looked like it was over the line by like eight, nine, ten inches. It was yeah. way over the line. Yeah. At least. Clear. Yeah. Obviously. Oh yeah. That, on yeah. the on what got tweeted out this morning, right? And then so when when they called it a goal because Fox Sports didn't show the angle of showing it in, mm-hmm. uh, they just showed that it was you know probably the common sense in, and they called it a goal. I was like, wow, yeah, okay, so they must have had a better right. angle. How many tweets do we see? You know, is this really happening? I know, right? <laughs> Wait, the, the Blues got this one? <laughs> what? And then Hitchcock immediately challenges for goal interference. I'm like, motherfucker, <laughs> god damn it! <laughs> and so we got another two or three minute delay, yeah. at least. Most of the time, that kind of delay like just really irritates everybody. Yeah. It, it irritates I, you know me. What? But you know, like I, I, it was comical. I was enjoying it. It yeah. was it was different. Right. It was it was different. So right. I, I kind of enjoyed it. It was a bit of a chess match. I enjoyed the suspense. Yeah. But uh, and then so and then they show the replay again about the golden interference uh, uh, that they were uh, reviewing for, and where where yeah I know there there were sticks there. Mm. But to be honest, um, and it depends on who you listen to online because, man, uh, Edmonton's Twitter was a dumpster fire after that, after the goal, after the, the goaltender interference review was, uh, you know, uh, not 
upheld. They 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 counted the goal, and uh, they went like, "Oh, he pushed the pad. You can't push the pad in." And I'm looking at him like, I don't see a stick pushing the pad in the goal. Yeah. I see sticks there. I see incidental contact. The puck is not really covered. It's it's under his pad, but it's like it's his, his pad's moving around. He doesn't know where it is. So and and the in my opinion that this is the way I saw it that the stick didn't push the pad in the goal. The, the he's he's doing the splits. Talbot's doing the splits, and there are guys. Uh, poking and whatnot, and I think to get stability, I he 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 swings his leg around to kind of get on all fours almost, yeah. and that's because he's like I can't stay in the splits forever, so he swings his leg around. I don't even know if he knew where the puck was. Yeah. Um. I, so clearly not. Yeah. Otherwise, he doesn't try to try to yeah stabilize right. himself in that right manner, right. And he and he swung his pad around. His pad may have been knocked by a stick, but the stick didn't push his pad to right. goal. Um, I, he, I think he brought his pad around because he was fucking doing the splits at the time. And he had to pull his pad around to, so he didn't tear a groin. Um, that's the way I saw it. And boy, oh, it, Oilers Twitter was a mess. Oh my God. Hey, which right. what I, do you, what I, do you yeah, expect? I know, but it's just, it was just fun. I, I enjoy reading other teams, uh, reactions, it's fans re- reactions to things. It kind of gives me a perspective and, uh, makes me feel better about blues fans too, because, because <laughs> it just, just spending a lot of time on blues Twitter is just, It'll, it'll, it'll make you sick. Yeah. Cause it's just depressing. It's just, there's a lot of, a lot of stupid things being said. Yeah. So, and it's, it's, it's a bad year. So, and it's a bad year, yeah. which doesn't help at all. No, that makes it worse. So that was, uh, that was, safe. that was a comical. Oh, price, uh, makes us, oh my God. Beauty. See, that's another, a groin tearing save by yep. Carrie price. Save of the year candidate. Okay. So, uh, so, and that was the, uh, that was the go ahead goal. Yes. So the that was game winning goal. That was a game winning goal. Go ahead goal at the time and game winner. And that was, uh, and so that was a big goal. And then come the Dunn and uh, Kara. Is that about his name? Kara? Kara? Jujar Kara. Jujar Kara. Jujar Kara. <laughs> we just went over that. Jujar Kara. Yes. Uh, yeah. The cross checks. Again, I, I, if, if if you guys listening, if you ever uh, after a game or during a game, check out the other team. Go to go to like a search the other team's hashtag and see what their fans are talking about. Because it's just it's interesting. It makes you laugh. Might make you mad too um, about what's being said. But uh, yeah. So anyway, Blues go in the power play um, after Dunn exchanged cross checks to the head with uh, uh, Kara. Don and Kara get in the uh, 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 they both cross it, check each other in the head when battling or well actually Don cross checks Kara in the head when battling in front to go to the front of the net okay uh, looked unintentional I don't know if he was pissed about the hit in the corner or what um, but it didn't look it didn't, may have been it, it may have been but I don't I didn't didn't look intentional he he intended to cross check oh, him, yeah, yeah, not yeah, right. in the head. Right. And that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. Obviously he wanted to cross check him, but so uh, and then Kara retaliated with a just I don't know, as nasty a cross check to the head you're gonna see. I mean, it was just oh, you cross check me in the head, I'll cross check you in the head. Yeah, and it was retaliatory. It was, it was completely oh, retaliatory. Retaliatory, uh vicious, uh worse than the one Dunn dished out. Yeah. Um by a mile. Yep. Totally and, worthy of the five in the game. And he got, Oh yeah. And, and the two game suspension that yeah. the NHL levied today. Right. Um, I thought the officials nailed this on the, I thought Dunn deserved the two minutes for cross checking, obviously. Mm. Um, and then Kara should got the, uh, Kara got the, uh, uh, correct five minute in a game misconduct. And then the hearing today, mm-hmm. uh, uh, is a two game suspension, which, I thought today some people were saying in a game. I thought, oh, I can see him getting two, but no more than two, and so he got two. So that was uh, uh, fair, I guess. I'm not. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think he has a history of that kind of thing. Um, I don't think he's a repeat offender. No. Uh, and Dunn, Dunn did get fined a nineteen hundred dollar right. fine, maximum allowable <laughs> right. under the CBA. Right. And I, I think that's appropriate too. It was, it was, it wasn't a you know, a uh, uh, a major penalty, but it was it, it was more vicious than your average. Oh yeah, track. uh, what which one? Duns or Duns? Like, yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, it was. I mean, 
a cross check to the right. head is going to be right. It wasn't. It wasn't garden variety cross check no, no. guy in the back. No, it was which a tie. Is rarely called unless they go down. Right. And is so. Uh, but that was so. I, I thought the officials nailed it, um, and I thought the suspension was fair. Uh, I, again, Edmonton's Twitter was quite hilarious. That, and it just boggled. It's just interesting to see how other fans see it with the obvious blinders on. I I don't. Think I'm viewing this with blinders? Maybe I am, but I don't think I am. Well, but we, they were, they were, they were, they were many, 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 many fans were, were not all. I'm not gonna say all, but you know, a lot of them on on Twitter anyway were this is the same play, same same cross check should have been same penalty for both. Uh, where's the you know people are saying where's the hearing for Dunn? Uh, just because Dunn is a glass jaw and goes down doesn't mean that you know cars was any worse. I'm like. Are you fucking kidding me? That, that that was a lot of that shit. So it's just kind of I I try not to get too worked up on stuff like that because mm-hmm. there's a lot of bullshit online about the shit. Yeah. But it's it's fun it, to look at. People tweet their emotions, and, and in your emotions, you usually go with your biases, and uh, yeah, it makes sense. That's why I generally try to avoid tweeting when angry. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I generally try to, but I, I'll, I'll tweet when I'm angry. I'll tweet when I'm, uh, uh, uh whatever. Uh, God, I, I, I hate being wrong though. I, I really try and be right. I, 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 I make every effort to be right. Cause I, I really hate backtracking online. Yeah. It just sucks. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> sometimes I'm not saying I'm perfect. To dig in though. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I can argue with the best of them, <laughs> but I, I, really, I don't think I'm wrong too much about the shit because I really try and double check shit before I post it. But, um, Anyway, uh, and then Tarasenko's power play goal gave the Blues some breathing room, which was mm. nice and a big goal for the team. Big goal for him. Yeah, he was shooting the puck well all night. How many one timers did he attempt? I want to talk about. It. Yeah, uh, uh, at least two. Uh, and uh, uh, and the thing is that his goal here was a quick release. Mm-hmm. He didn't do the old fucking dust uh, it off. Uh, and... Yeah, dust it off backhand forehand uh, line it up, uh, create shoot line mm-hmm. and shoot. No, he he got it and fired it. And I, we've been saying this for a long right. time. It's like, get the shot off. Quit dicking around with it and just shoot it. Coaching um, staff's been in his ear about it. Apparently. Maybe it seemed like it because he was getting the shot off much quicker last yeah. game. And he got a nice goal because of it. Hopefully that means a little bit more confidence, more shooting of that nature. Yeah, The goals will come for him if he's shooting the puck with confidence and quickly. I, you know, I'm not going to go like, you know, Peng was kind of, you know, prognosticating that, oh, the floodgates are going to open now. I hate that. Yeah. He scored, he scored, was it nine, 10 goals this year? Mm-hmm. He's had 10 opportunities for floodgates to open and it hadn't really happened. So, right. So, <laughs> this see, is, let's see what number, happens tomorrow night in Vancouver. Right. Attempt number 10 <laughs> to yeah. get on a roll for him. Um, and then Schwartz is emptying that goal. Um, Pretty much right after Talbot was pulled, which was nice. No really real suspense there. Mm-hmm. Um, with a couple minutes to go, one that passed off in the zone, worked the puck up to Shen, to Schwartz, and then just bang from center ice. Uh, easy peasy. So, yeah, I uh, great effort. Uh, this The great finish. Allen was great. Um, and he has been for most or part of the over the last, uh, what, dozen plus, something like that, uh, 13 games. So, and because like, somebody uh, complained on Twitter that, I was not giving Alan credit when credit was due. So I was like, I thought I have been, I thought yeah. I, I've said many times that he's been playing well the past five games, eight right. games, 10 games. I, but right. I mean, his, the last three road games, he, yeah. he, he's, what's it like phenomenal. a, yeah, it's, is it it's, a nine, six save percentage yeah. and a under two GA, something yeah. like that. And he's three and oh. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, but it's, let's bring on the road games. Right. <laughs> Right. Let's try Bennington at home and Allen on the road for a little while. Let's see how that works. Oh, I'm I'm not. I I give me a Bennington start once every six games or so. Yeah. That's uh, I don't. <laughs> I, I I I I'm I do get excited when I hear that he's going to start because I just want to see how he does. Not it's not a knock on Allen, but I just you know new goalie. Oh, okay, let's see how he does. I'm yeah. I'm 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 rooting for him. But so I root for both. I root for Allen too. I do. Honest to God. I want the Blues to win. I don't give a shit who's in goal. I've said uh, I don't give a shit who's in goal. I want the Blues to win. Allen or who else? I don't care. Um, the Blues penalty kill in this game was they uh, killed all five mm-hmm. and took a couple too many penalties. But, right. 
Well, except for the Calgary game, their penalty right. kill has been phenomenal tops of the league yeah like they're they're trending to to the best team in the league on the penalty kill didn't they they had uh they had killed something like 23 24 in a row mm-hmm. and, and then, then they gave up like three in the calgary game yeah it was a three or four in the calgary game and now yeah. they're back to yeah yeah and uh, you know as as this season has gone if the calgary game's a blip on the radar you know on, oh that's fine on, yeah. on both the just the overall play and the penalty kill I'm okay well, with that. Here's the deal. If the Blues beat Vancouver, they'll have won four or five. Right. So you could you could honestly say, okay, the last five games, the Calgary game was the anomaly. So you could make that argument. Yeah. Ask me if I'm gonna risk staying up to watch the <laughs> entire game tomorrow. Um uh I will. It's a it's a it's a, oh, it's a Thursday. It's a Thursday. Nah, I was thinking, it's, it was a, I was thinking Friday. It's still a school night. Yeah, well, but you know, Friday is the last day of the work week for us. Anyway, we got the the last day of the work year. I mean, work year. Yeah. Yeah. Same so, for me. Yeah. So I mean, I, there's not going to be anything going on Friday. Right. Now I'm early, I'm, early off day too. I only have a half day. No, I got. I'm off at two. Yeah, so it's see, I'm a couple hours early. I'm I'm kind of torn. Friday, like, I could leave work, go watch Liverpool play Wolverhampton at Amsterdam Tavern, make some new friends. <laughs> Get drunk early. Watch some soccer. And then have to go do my Christmas dinner preparation shopping while drunk. Huh. Or uh, just go home and watch it and have a beer. I'll watch it. I can't not. Yeah. Now, if it's a blowout, I might not watch the period. But. Yeah, I, I'll watch at least the first period. It's just yeah. last night was, you know, I, I was not going to stop watching the game after, you know, going into the third period, but we had an extra hour because it was mountain time zone, right. not, not the Pacific. And it was a good game. Yeah. I enjoyed the game. Is it, is it nine o'clock or is it nine thirty? 30? That's the one. Oh, I don't know. Tomorrow. I, I think Vancouver is usually nine o'clock. San Jose is the, the, uh, city that does the nine thirty starts <clears throat> St. Louis time. Um, it is uh, nine o'clock. Okay. I will watch the first period and see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. Um. So uh, the uh, the Blues outshot Edmonton uh, thirty to twenty three, um, which the shots were pretty close until uh, the Blues had that five minute uh, or that three minute power play, and they kind of right. pulled away after that. Um. Uh, the Blues won the faceoff battle fifty two to forty eight, which is not unusual, although they have been struggling on the faceoff dot lately, I think. But uh, the Oilers out hit the Blues thirty four to twenty one. Blues had 18 blocks to Edmonton's 11, and the Blues had 13 giveaways to Edmonton's 18, which is a lot by today's giveaway standards. They don't really count giveaways uh, like they probably should. Right. A team will have like four giveaways in a game at the end of one of these games, right. which is like ridiculous. Especially, especially home teams don't yep. ever get credited for giveaways. No, why would they? And why would they? And why wouldn't they? Uh, Jake Allen has been uh, good on the road. Now I just we just talked about that, and um, one more too many ga- too many men on the ice penalty. <laughs> God. Somebody I saw somebody tweeted out that whoever gets the next one, uh, whoever gets the next too many men on the ice penalty, I don't care who they are, immediately on waivers. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, but Brube took uh, Brube took the heat for that after the game post game press conference. He was like, ah, it's. I'll take the blame for that one. That was me. I'm like, all right, but I yeah, mean, you're, you'll only say that because your team won. Sure. Yeah. And, uh, let's not, uh, harp on the players after a win. So I'll take the heat for that one, yeah. which I get it completely. But, and, and that's great because would Mike, you have done that. I, yeah, maybe. I would Ken Hitchcock have hell no. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, it, it would have been a talking point, but we still talk another too many about the ice penalty. <laughs> As a result, David Parab will be in the press box for three games, even though I had nothing to do with it. LSG Electronics in the YouTube chat says Blue special team surprisingly decent. <laughs> yeah, I mean the, the, all, the, the power play has been up and down, but you know overall good, and uh, the penalty kill has been really good, trending up for a while. Yeah, and uh, after a average start, I guess uh, they've been trending very well. So that's uh, you can't complain about that stuff, and that's. You know, uh, that's, uh, you know, part of the reason why they won three or four. And so that mm-hmm. well, uh, hopefully it, uh, that keeps it up and they can, uh, play well five on five. That's been their Achilles right. heel this season. Five that, on five. Right. And that's, that's the part of the game that they've got to get ironed out. 
Yeah. And hey, you know what? Let's talk about Bo Meester. Just for a second. Um, and you know, I'm sure you'll love like this comment, but uh, he's been pretty good lately. Now, I'm not great, but he's been, he's been, you don't notice him out there, which is a good thing. It's like a well officiated game. You don't really notice the officials, mm-hmm. you know, because they did a good job. You know, there was no bitching about Bo Meester. So he did his job and he's, you know, he's been fine the past handful of games, eight games or so. With the exception, as the rest of the team of the Calgary game. Well, right, and I'm and everyone makes mistakes, but right. you know he was making them by the truckloads right early in the season and last year. But right, so but to your point, yes, he has been better. He is he has been not noticeable. <laughs> he's he's been he's done his job right. He's done his he's job. He's serviceable right, which is what we want from him at this point in his career oh, and yeah. his contract. And you can't expect too much more out of him. But he's 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 not missing assignments in front as much. He's uh, or you know I, that I that I've seen. Ex- uh, except okay, for the Calgary, right? Game, the right. Calgary game was a shit show. I think you can blame a lot of people for a lot of things. Right. And he, he's he's not he's one of them. But still, yeah. Well, there are two goals in the Calgary game that I think are directly attributable to him. If he can if he can play well, you know, four like he has been four out of every five games. I'll take that. In a oh, second. absolutely. So, uh, compared to what he was doing earlier this year. Yeah, where every game it was every game there was a goal that was his fault yeah. <laughs> against or off his butt, off his leg, or he he was uh he'd kick a goal in or he'd he'd uh, miss a guy in front, not tie up a stick, or just completely lose a guy and yeah, or be too slow. It's just haven't seen that recently, which you know, knock on wood or something. I don't know. Uh Petrangelo Fabry and Gunnarsson practice today in Edmonton. All good things, uh, although, yeah, I, I think, I it's silly to rush Petrangelo back when he had surgery. Yeah, I mean, you, you, it it is what it is. Let so, him let him get his legs under him, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully the practice is just skating and not trying to puck handle. Oh no, he's not. I can't imagine he. Yeah, I wouldn't. He's going to be reevaluated in like a week or yeah. was it the nineteenth? Yeah, about a week. Yeah. So, so Fabry, of course, you know, excited to get, we need more speed on this team and he's still got it at this point. You know what I thought when he hurt his shoulder? I thought, okay, even more time for his knee to heal. Yeah. <laughs> by, yeah. By not, by not being out there. Even yeah. it's a couple more weeks or a few more weeks, whatever it's going to be. So, yeah. And, uh, you know, who would have thought a year and a half ago, even that we'd be like, Carl Gunnarsson get healthy, so Chris yeah, Butler's not here. I know. You got but yeah. We we he's, Carl Gunnarsson over the last year and a half again. He hasn't been noticeable. Like right in the good way, which is a good thing. He does his job in a quiet way. He's not a big physical guy. He's not a puck mover. Really, he's just a yeah. Although he had a nice start last year to the season with the goals. Yeah, four goals I think. And yeah, then, yeah. So. uh yeah, so apparently, okay, so that stick gate, we, real quick, since we didn't cover this. Right, and back this is, to the Colorado game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, so, and this this kind of, um, un, I, I, again, because I, I read, you know, on Twitter and watching the game live, because a lot of times I watch the game on DVR, watching it live and seeing all the folks on Twitter and talking, uh, you know, that so many people, this, so many people got this wrong. Uh, me included um, for a while, but even after the fact, people didn't understand what was going on. So uh, let's see what happened. Uh, uh, Pareko drops his stick in the corner, loses his stick. Mm-hmm. Um, Tarasenko ends up giving him his stick, and and they didn't say this. The lead didn't say this, but I think the official thought that Pareko broke his stick and mm-hmm. dropped it. I'm pretty sure he thought it was a broken stick, or didn't know what happened. A soon was broken because it was laying in the corner. Um, and then eventually Tarasenko goes to the corner and picks up Pareko's stick and then comes back to play it. And as soon as he gets back into the play, they blow the whistle dead. It's like, they didn't blow it dead as soon as he picked it up, but he got back into the play. And then, uh, I think it was a Pareko played the puck or dove, someone dove and hit the puck and they blew the whistle dead for Tarasenko. They announced it playing with illegal equipment, but it was funny because when they go back to the official, um, Tarasenko is saying that the stick's not broken. He's, he's flexing on the ice. It's not broken. So that, that leads me to believe that the official said you picked up a broken stick. Um, unless Tarasenko assumed he thought it was broken and didn't ask. But so, but the ruling was 
was that okay? Well, Preco has an exemption, right, to use a, a, a two inch longer stick, right, because he's such a tall guy, right. He's anyone six six or above is allowed to uh, request a longer stick, up to two inches longer than everyone else's. So there's that. So he does use longer stick. So that means nobody else, uh, anyone else, well, actually, probably no one else, because even if somebody is six six on the ice that is not petitioned the league to use longer stick. He couldn't just pick it up because he didn't get permission to do it first. The league has to get permission. Right. So anyway, so Tarasenko picks it up. Tarasenko is not 6'6". And uh, the league says that's why the penalty happened because he was using a stick that was too long for him. Right. Which I, which I get. Right. And what, what the NHL further clarified was that they don't want the refs stopping right. play right. over that, that they don't want the, the refs to have to try to make that determination right. while play is going on. Because usually it'd be a case where it's an illegal curve, right? A player uses it and they wouldn't be able to. And this is, and no one, did anybody mention this? I didn't hear this. This is the McSorley. This is the Kings and Canadians, uh, Stanley cup finals. This is his stick measurement game. It, the, issue. That was Kings Leafs. King in, in the semifinals. Was it? Yeah, in the Western Conference Finals, the, the Campbell Conference Finals. Okay. All right. But so uh Mix Orley. I believe. I don't know. That was a long time ago. It was Kings Canadians. 25 years. That was Kings Canadians. Yeah. Because didn't it was uh, one of those didn't two series. Bowman Bowman was coaching the Canadians at the time? No. 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 This it was, was Jacques Demers was the coach of the okay. Canadians in ninety three. Oh, all right, all right, all right. okay. So uh, but this this is the exact same thing. This is the 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 and this is my issue with it all because the the league screwed this up. The officials screwed this up. That they officials aren't allowed to call this a stoppage and play, like you said. Mm. And and it's the exact same. And the way the Kings had it done to them when McSorley had his stick measured by the Leafs, I guess, um, was the right way. Stoppage. You have to wait till the next stoppage and play. Then the other team has to challenge to then. Uh, say okay, we want to measure the stick, and then the official has to actually measure it. In in the game the other night, the official never measured the stick. I'm doubting myself. I think it was the Canadians. I'll double check. Okay, keep going. Keep going. <laughs> I should know this. Um, and I'm seeing that the YouTube chat has it. Uh, bring back trivia challenge, Bill. That's LSGA Electronics. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm positive it's uh, it was Kings and Canadians in the finals because. The Kings had a one game to none lead, and they and if and if they, uh, yes, I, yeah, because I know I'm positive because Desjardins I think yeah, scored. It was. Desjardins yes. scored in the power play. Yes, it was. You are correct. Yeah. It, look at look it, at look it, at it me. Was, was not a, the Canadians fan. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful goal by Eric Desjardins. Yeah, I, I I drew pictures of that when I was in. in and that was on the greater. No, that was '93. I was was it five hole Kelly Rudy right? Yeah. Was it five hole? Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, and that was the goal that came off of the power play they got yep. from challenging McSorley stick, yep. who was stupidly using an illegal curve in the Stanley Cup Finals. And again, they were winning by one in the third, late in the third period. Yes. So that is that is correct. And if I, the Kings have won I that game, that I got that wrong. <laughs> if the Kings have won that game, they'll go two in the series. And who knows? I don't think the Kings won another game after that that play after that that loss. They lost the series, I think, in five games, didn't they? I think. I think the Kings lost the rest of the games. Anyway, um, so that's the same thing. And the officials... Uh, it was also you know, that the sent the game to overtime. The Canadians could not lose in overtime. They, they set the record. That was John LeClaire, uh Yeah, John LeClaire's rookie year. And he had like six overtime goals in the playoffs that year. It was insane. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I, I I remember the run of the uh, overtime when yeah. games they won, but I didn't realize that he had six go or so, yeah, something I'm crazy. I'm probably like that. wrong about that too, but <laughs> you know, I'm just I'm all about being wrong tonight. Um, but yeah, so the officials shouldn't have uh, blown that dead. They they shouldn't have even said anything during the stoppage. They have to wait for the opposing team to challenge. And to be honest, uh, there's no guarantee that uh, uh, Colorado challenges that. Would they challenge? I, I don't know. Probably not. Because they, they, they would have to have they'd have a to, pretty smart person. And here's the deal. To here's the deal. Make that determination. Here's the deal too. The 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 rule book states this, and I don't think this was covered either. I read this in the rule book. 
So uh, since the officials have to wait for a stoppage and play, uh, the other team has to wait for a stoppage and play before they can uh, get the measurement. So if play continued and then Tarasenko went to the bench, which I'm sure he would have pretty soon after that because he had a stick that was not for him. It was a wrong hand and everything. So he probably goes to the bench right away. And so the officials have to keep an eye on the stick. If a player goes to the bench and they lose sight of the stick, then they can't measure it. So the other team's challenge would not be, wouldn't be worth anything. So even if the other team had challenged, if the officials lose sight of the stick, when a player goes to the bench, they can't challenge it, obviously, because they don't know which stick it is. So there's that. There's all kinds of fun stuff with the with the officials in the uh, NHL this season, yeah. <laughs> with screwing up calls and and uh, and uh, not apparently not going by the word of the rule book for some stuff like the Tim Peel play. Yeah. Um. So. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, off Tim Peel's dick. And Bob Burkowski said Avalanche should have had to challenge before it was even called. Correct. Yep. During a stoppage, and only if the officials had not lost sight of the stick. Right. You know what this is. This is an example of an, you know, overzealous, overregulated world, or some kind of. <laughs> I, I I can't even hmm. feign going off on a. It's a very conservative uh, point of view, you got that. right? I I can't even feign <laughs> going off on that kind of rant. Um, no, it, it just it was terrible, uh, you know, stupid, and uh, so much more gratifying when O'Reilly goes down the other way and scores. A oh, I know, right? Short-handed goal. That was amazing. God. That was so great. I I haven't this year. I have maybe screamed yeah at a <laughs> yeah. blues game twice and that was one of them yeah because there was a lot of uh frustration uh recent frustration in that game that mm-hmm. was kind of built up and you're just kind of pissed off about the whole uh being shorthanded thing and then and to shove it back in their face right. kind of like kind of like steen's uh overtime goal against the kings um in the playoffs yeah uh, when the blues were shorthanded and and uh he stole the puck from quick and stuffed it in that was yeah. I yelled pretty loud at that one. Yeah, I did too. I was I was playing poker that night, and <laughs> that one. But two guys got up around and ran around the table, high fiving. It was it was awesome. That was that we was were a, all screaming. That was a great fucking goal. Yeah. God, that was good. Yeah, but on the O'Reilly goal, you know, it that probably should have talked about this earlier to set the stage for the little bit we talked about the Calgary game. But goddamn, you were so hopeful going into the Calgary game. Yep. But yeah. again, after I, winning two games, but. right? I I still I had a I had a pretty good feeling what was going to happen. Did make time to watch the game, yeah. but I watched it for the most part. It's the hope that kills you. <laughs> so, uh, interesting about interesting thing about Patrick Bergel in the past few days mm. is that man, <laughs> um. Berglund has uh, failed to show up to practice uh, lately for the Buffalo Sabres and missed the team's last flight to the Sabres uh, today or yesterday. I guess it was or today. 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 Come Put on him on unconditional waivers, unconditional waivers uh, which means his uh, contract will be voided and he will forfeit the rest of his salary, which he has three more years after this season, which pays him $3.85 million per mm-hmm. for the next three years and the prorated for the remainder of the season. So, the he's Sab- walking away. He's walking away, and the Sabres will be clear of his salary off the books, uh, which is huge for them. And Berglund wanted this. He he knew what he was doing. You don't go, you don't show up to practice, uh, and they cover for you. Say you're sick, and then you don't show up to a team flight. And they're like, okay, we got to we got to suspend you, and then uh, and then it, and so, which I'm like, why the fuck couldn't he have done that when he was here? And then we could have just waved him and and then be done with it. Yeah. So, but he and but he did help us get O'Reilly. And there are a few people, Jeremy Rutherford included, who have suggested, no, nah, the Blues wouldn't bring him back, would they? Yeah, right. I, I well, and with all this talk of trading Shen, and then uh, it's like, okay, well, Shen could be a guy that teams are interested in, and uh, they might move him if the Blues are sellers. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, uh, oh, okay, we got a center spot open, kind of. Uh, we'll bring back. But Berglund's off. We can sign Berglund. Don't take him on waivers because you take a salary. You you let him clear waivers and then you try and sign him. But I, I'm not suggesting this. I don't want him back here at all. Um, see, I I don't want Shen to go. I don't. No, I don't either. 
but the I'd player, rather see the player replacement scenario that I'd like to see play out is Berglum for Patrick Maroon. I, I'm Ooh. I'm done with Patrick Maroon. Okay. I'm um I mean I I'm sorry. He the guy has like he's negative speed and he's I, I get that he's a local guy and everybody, you know, having grown up playing hockey in this area, there are so few NHL caliber guys. I, what, do we need what, that? Just because that's really all he brings. What, yeah, he got a he got credited for a goal. That that whole play was Rob Thomas. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, yeah. He, whole play was he he brought the puck to that area. Yeah. So what what would you what would you uh, want the Blues to sign Berglund for? Three point eight five million now. That's his last salary. So what would you want the contract to be? I I wave wave maroon at the salary he's getting and give that exact same money to Berglund. Berglund doesn't need that money. Hey, did Jeff join? I think <gasps> Jeff Ponder just joined the show. And oh. actually, Rakowski said, and this we're going we're talking about this next about how uh, Berglund's agent goofed mm-hmm. on the no trade clause requirements when he got traded. But it wasn't when he got traded. He he, well, yeah, it was because he he goofed on. He had to file uh, by July first, I think it was, and uh, by not filing in a timely manner. That's the the verbiage they used. They didn't file in a timely manner. What the fuck does that mean? Just say they filed. He filed late or didn't file in time. What does timely manner mean? It almost means like there's a grace period that he just missed or mm-hmm. something. I don't know. Is it right. weird? It's a weird no, way to phrase it's, it. It's a total fucking failure on the agent's part. I agree. But they always say not in a timely manner. What the fuck does that mean? Not in a timely manner. It's, he was late. Just say cor- he was late or missed the deadline. Speak. He missed the deadline is it's, what happened. It's corporate speak. So... Yeah, and I, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know if that's a public knowledge or whether he fired his agent or his representatives, but uh, he should have. Maybe that's what he's on a bender right now because he's <laughs> losing his shit over <laughs> realizing his agent fucked him. I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's a family member who's his agent. I don't know. I'm not up on whose agent is, but I, I that's that is, uh, it was Yuri Latero. On <laughs> unacceptable for uh for that to happen but but yeah so anyway what what would you what would so if you if you're gonna wave maroon mm-hmm. and the blues would sign berlin what, what would the contract situation be whatever maroon was making oh 1.75 something like that yeah at most I'd, I'd i i think he'll get he get more from that somewhere else yeah he get i think i think he'll get two and a half somewhere else but the, the thing is i think he's gonna be He's leaving millions on the table. He's he's well, walking away from it's ten and a half or something. Like he's that. walking away from ten and a half million, uh, or more than that because no, it's three it's, years then plus 11. this year. Yeah, it's got plus be plus over half of this year. Yeah, almost so 12. it's al- almost two this year, and then so yeah, whatever it is, twelve something. But uh, he that's a that's a lot of money to walk away. Guaranteed money to walk away from. All you gotta do is show up and play hockey, and he don't want to. He could not he demand a trade. I guess he talked to him about that. Demand the trade. I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of noise going on. Mr. Ponder? Hello. Hey. How's it going, fellas? Hey, you're a little late. Yeah. I, a little bit. A little bit. Go starts at 917 promptly. I'm not uh, causing any kind of crazy noise right now, am I? Uh, a little bit. You're kind of, uh, I, it sounds like you're you're fidgeting with the microphone. You're oh. at me. Hang on, hang on. Let me let me fix this. You're not echoing. You're not echoing. You're fine. You son of a bitches. You're loud. You, yeah, you don't get to come on this show right away and start cussing right off the bat. You can't do that. I want to talk about what I want to talk about. <laughs> Let's talk about that dill hole cross check. I don't care if you guys already talked about it. Oh, we talked about it already. Sorry, it's long I'm gone. I'm kidding. Let's <laughs> uh, let's let's keep rolling, fellas. What do you get? What well, what's next? Um, well, uh, we're, uh, done. So we're, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are at the end of our uh, talking points here. We actually are, but, um, we just finished talking about, um, the Brooklyn stuff and, uh, Bill said that, uh, he, uh, would consider, he would like to see the blues consider waving maroon and signing Brooklyn. If, you know, if they that- were bringing Berglund, ba- if, they, if they would ever bring Berglund into the fold, I think that would be the move to make. At, at, at Maroon's salary. How pissed off would Phil Maroon be? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
you know, film, it doesn't it doesn't take much to piss off film around <laughs> it does, all you got to do is say hey I don't think uh, Pat Maroon played his best game tonight. <laughs> what? <laughs> Shut up, loser. <laughs> um, no, you know, uh, that is something that uh, one of my good friends asked me. And when I say good friends, I say people who aren't on Let's Go Blues Radio because I don't like those guys. Um, I had one of those guys, I had a friend ask me what I thought of that because they know I'm a Berglund uh, uh, apologist. And you know, I hate to say that I would consider that because I think the world would burn in terms of St. Louis hockey fans. Um, but at that salary for Berglund, one point was a 1.7, 1. 1.6. I think Maroon makes 1.75, don't he? S- sounds right. Yeah. I mean, a checking forward, I, I do kind of feel like, and this was a, a topic over the, the uh, summer interview series of a couple of the, the Blues uh, beat writers um, and uh, announcers, you know, are the Blues missing out on a good checking forward with them completely replacing their fourth line? And, uh, you know, they all said, no, we're going to have four scoring lines. Well, I do think there is a little bit of a, a, a miss with, Having a good checking forward late in the game. Um, is that Berglund? Ugh, I don't know. Um, you know, maybe you sign him in March so he scores 15 goals for you. <laughs> was, I was just about to make that point. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, that's, a, that's an interesting call. I, I think aesthetically, that's an awful move because it is going to piss off a lot of people. But at the end of the day, you're trying to win hockey games. And really, I mean, let's face it, Berglund at this point is bringing more to the team than Pat Maroon is. I see. I think that uh, we've seen what Berglin can do. We know what he's, what his ceiling is. And I think, I think if we moved on from Maroon, we're selling low or waving low. I, I, I think that I think the ceiling for Maroon is much higher at this point in for both sure. careers. So I think it, it, with the team that playing the way it is and where they're on the standings, I'd almost, I'd almost want to see if Maroon can work his way out of it. I, I, I mean, I, I, he's a much better player than what he's shown, and I, 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 I I'm, I've we've had Berglin for a long time, and I just I'm I, I'm just kind of done with him. He's he's not a difference maker, so I don't really want to see him back. I think Maroon can be a difference maker. He hasn't been this year, but I'd I'd rather take my chance with a guy who might turn it around as opposed to bringing back Berglin, who you know what you're gonna get. I don't know. That that's, that's I, 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 I mean, I, 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 it's both sides for me. Honestly, you could flip a coin, and I'm gonna see the positives and the negatives. I, I'm probably me- leaning more towards your view, Kurt. That you know, if this team starts clicking, finally, Maroon can be a difference maker. I mean, he he was in in every other uh, team he's played with. I mean, they loved him in Anaheim, they loved him in Edmonton. I don't think they saw him enough in New Jersey, but uh, it's an interesting take to to bring back what you know you're going to get out of a checking forward but i do think that at the end of the day you're probably for one time right in your life kurt i think <laughs> you need to stick with maroon and see what he can do i don't know i i, I mean I, I think a lot of that comes from my bias too that i'm just done with Berglund. I, I yeah that plays into my rationale my my biased uh, ignorant rationale rationale too so well and i said that last year for me too was that uh, i uh um, uh, I like Berglund and I still do. Um, and I, you know, I wish the best for him, but uh, I was kind of like that probably more December, January last year. So about this time last year, I'm like, okay, I'm, you know, we got to move on from Berglund. It's time to, to see this team without number 21 in the lineup. And, uh, I, as much as I'm, you know, still kind of a, guess a, a supporter and, uh, someone that, uh, you know, apologizes for him constantly. I was, I was ready to move on from him too. So I, I think you're right. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's not going to happen. I mean, oh, I, I don't know. I'm, well, Armstrong is the GM and, you know, David Brown's on his fourth stint with this team. Um, but no, I, I don't think it's going to happen. But I do think that the best case scenario for Pat Maroon is that he hasn't yet figured out 
the work-life balance back in his hometown and maybe there are a few too many late nights out or you know he, he's just relishing a little too much not uh, not focusing on the work end of it uh, as much and that that changes but i've been very disappointed uh in in you know his play he was he was great while he was on the power play the first 10 games um yeah but he's just his like I said before, I, I think he has a negative speed rating. He's just, he's slow. It's, it's tough for him to get to the corners to, you know, on a chip play and, oh. and make plays happen. Um, this maybe, should, this maybe, should... maybe he can focus on that and change, turn that around. But I don't know. I'm, I'm just, I'm highly frustrated with, with what he's brought to the team to this point. Uh, this, this could, uh, no, I, there we go. Or, there we go. Um, uh, Pano's still muted. Why is that? Did he mute himself? No, I muted him because there was... Am I there? Hello? Okay, you're good. You're good. Okay, sorry. Okay. Uh, I was just going to say, uh, to, to Bill's point, that um, this, I think you're, oh, you're, you've got something there. I think there's a, a little bit of a honeymoon phase, um, and you know maybe he's starting to work himself out of it. I mean, that was a, a hard-working goal the other night that he had um and, you know that's the type of play we've seen from him in spurts and if you can start getting that effort more and more and you start seeing the crashing and banging i mean i, I mentioned it to you guys i think uh, uh i want to say it was about three or four games ago i can't remember exactly which game it was maybe it was the colorado overtime game um he got drilled in the corner and and it was just oh man what is he going to do about that nothing he got up and skated away and, and, you know, granted it's a close game. You don't want to, you know, do anything stupid, but I mean, say something, you know, give him a, a hack in the back of the leg as he skates away. I mean, you just don't see that fire from him that you thought you would see. And, and Bill, to your point, you know, the slowness is, you can't have that on your, on your top six and in, in 2018 in the NHL, um, something that was kind of a conversation, going forward uh, when we, after the Blues signed him was, do you put him on your fourth line? And I'm okay with that. I think if your fourth line right now was Nolan Sunquist and uh, uh, Maroon, granted that's a slow fourth line, but they could do some damage. Uh, you know, that's a big fourth line that could really kind of create some havoc. And if they can get the puck hemmed in the offensive zone, uh, that sets up a, a line change to get Tarasenko, Schwartz, and Chen out there on the offensive. So I think that's – and then put them out there on the power play. I don't think there's anything harm in that, having a fourth-line guy play on your power play. So I'd like to see something like that, but who knows? I mean, this team's so enigmatic, you don't know what you're going to see every night. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, it'll be interesting. We'll know by noon tomorrow if he's uh, claimed by anybody, which I can't imagine he would be. Right? No, no, um, because they'd have the to absorb- next. Right? They'd have to pay the salary, and right. he's his contract's going to be void, so yep. he'll be a free agent. That you get for right somewhat cheaper, not as cheap. Not, as- now, if if his contract were a bargain right now, then I could see it, you know that happening. But he's yeah, he's I I don't think he's going to make. He might make a little more than half what he's making now. I don't. I don't see him making. That's that's. He must really hate Buffalo to not want to play to give up. You know, walk away from twelve million or so and uh, sign a contract somewhere else for maybe six million over the next three years. You know, something like that's that's crazy. Six or seven million. Ah, that's that's a lot of money. Uh, I, it's a lot of money to just just walk away from. I know he's made probably he's made a lot in his career, but. Yeah. Not not as much as a lot of players, right? That's I mean, that's just an insane amount of money to walk away from for playing. Yeah, for I mean, and Buffalo's pretty. I mean, they've been good this year, right? No, they're they're they they fell a little bit in the standings. Lost five in a row, didn't they? But uh, yeah, but still, I mean, they've got they have pieces that are going to make them a playoff team this year. And they, you Carter know, Hutton, they, starter Hutton, <laughs> they've got to take a run. Skinner's a free agent at the end of this year. I don't know. Maybe this, maybe Berglund, uh, you know, getting rid of Berglund now frees up enough money that they can sign Skinner long term. But I don't see anybody signing long term there right now. 
So I, I want to throw out to and, and not to completely find a way to, to work this around a bitch about Doug Armstrong, but that's exactly what I want to do. Um, I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that it's like every single player that leaves the blues um, as a free agent signs somewhere else within almost games. They're just not a part of that team's plan and they're dropped. I mean, you look at Barrett Jackman, healthy scratch, almost the entire and Grant, again, I know you, you got to factor in the the age too, but, you know, Derek Roy and, you know, Patrick Berglund, these guys are signed to big deals by the Blues, and then they go elsewhere, and they are gone. I mean, they're nowhere to be seen. And it just, again, makes you say, why the hell is the Blues GM signing these guys to these absurd contracts? That's a question we've been asking for a long time. Like he, like Armstrong has been, uh, you know, uh, for the most part, I think he's been a pretty good wheeler and dealer. His trades go. I mean, he's made a lot of, he's made a number of moves that weren't, you know, good, but he, he he's made, he's made a lot of moves and, uh, his, we've talked about his Achilles heel seems to be contracts. His, his just bad contracts. He, right. out. he always has to give out a fucking contract this time of year. And he just gave one to Bortuzzo. It's yeah. like, he's, he's got a personal schedule that he's got to stick to. And it's just, they usually wind up not being good. Cause this, I think this was the time of year that we gave Yuri Laterra, the deal that we gave Yuri Laterra. And we all know <laughs> how that worked out. Why did Yuri Laterra need that much money anyway? If he was getting all that Coke money, Back in Finland, yeah, that was that was the only agenda. This is what I want to talk about. He, yeah, uh, yeah he is he is going to be prosecuted. <laughs> He's part of a twenty a uh, uh, group of twenty two of cocaine smuggling. Yeah, uh, uh, run that was run out of a house he owned apparently that other yeah, people were using. Summer house that other people were using, right? Yeah. That uh, that's the that's the story. How how much uh, he knew about the the goings on there is I guess yet to be determined. But he's apparently the uh, the prosecuting attorneys have determined he, you know, is involved enough to be part of the prosecution. Uh, so we'll see. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's just an insane story. Yeah, I know. That's uh, this is. Uh, I I I actually uh, tweeted out and I got some responses. I'm gonna do this. Um, the Blues uh, Mount Rushmore Hall of Shame, <laughs> or Mount Rushmore of Shame, I guess it is. So, uh, you know, Mike Danton's on there. Yeah. I mean, he's like, somebody said he's the George Washington on that monument. <laughs> um, mm. Do you put Latera on there? Because he wasn't on the blues when this went down. That's a tough call. Yeah. Well, when, when, when the shit broke, but was, was he on the blues when this happened? That's a good question. We'll find out, I guess. Yes. And who else would you put? Who else? So you got, you got Danton, you know, Latera's a maybe. Steve Durbano. Durbano. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I mean, well, if you put Durbano on there, you can almost put Plager on there for going to the stands and fighting the fans. And what? What about what about Shanahan? Shanahan, for oh the shit yeah, out of for Janie's wife for uh, or, I'm sorry for, for protecting Janie's wife's honor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, Janie. He uh, somebody suggested uh, Gilmore, but I didn't think that was very fair. Uh, that because Trump charges. Yeah, and the, the <laughs> Trump self charges, not Trump charges. Story was Trump recanted and bad. Stories were canted, and the the it was basically. I it, think they said it made it up, but it's hundred percent bullshit. Yeah. Well, there were no charges ever filed, according to STL Blues history. Right. So here's a here's a crazy thought. Even though I never played for the Blues, Kevin Stevens, he was caught on the uh, east side with uh, at, cocaine at the Travel Lodge yeah. in Collinsville. <laughs> I remember that. We drive by the Travel Lodge every once in a while. He was yeah. He was caught with an. With a crack crack whore, yeah, who was not attractive. Um, that's a story. <laughs> hmm. uh, insane. That's good. I like that because it's got St. Louis ties, but not for the Blues. That's good. Good tie-in, Jeff. That's what I do. Um, social media fails. I I didn't I don't and I didn't have anything specific. Um, just kind of want to generalize. Um, uh, Phil Maroon kind of made his presence known in Blues Twitter uh, again. Uh, what yesterday? Day before? Two days? Yesterday? Whatever it was. Um, you think Pat Maroon is embarrassed by Phil Maroon uh, on, uh, on Twitter? I mean, do you think that's a? Th do you think he's? I mean, 
Okay. Is, is he aware of it? Is he aware of it? And is he, if he is, I mean, would he like be pissed or just like, dude, you're an asshole? I'm embarrassed by my brother. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, I just think that, you know, and I get, you know, wanting to, you know, sticking up for family and I get it. You know, someone's ragging on your brother and you stick up for him. I get it. But man, it's like, it, it's just, it just, not not just defending, but being an asshole about it. So I don't know. I I, I thought that was thought that was kind of uh, I missed it. Yeah. Well, it was an exchange with 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 me, uh, and I just I got lectured because I said Maroon. I, this is what I said. I said, uh, you know, this Maroon's had a, a rough year, uh, underachieving, and he. Uh, I I said that. His stuff in play at the side of the net works about as often as uh, Yaskin's wraparound that he tried. And I've seen Maroon lose the puck uh, behind the end red line uh, more times than I care to count this season. That that caused Phil Maroon to kind of go off on me and lecture me like five tweets long about hockey. You got threaded? <laughs> I got threaded. And uh Yeah. So that was kind of funny. <laughs> I'm like, what I said wasn't wrong. I wasn't wrong about what I said. I like I like Pat Maroon. I really he seems like a fantastic guy. And which was the tweet that started it all, which was STL Blues history. And uh apparently Phil Maroon like stalks the guy or something or or on Twitter. You know, right. with, 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 has alerts with, with accounts on no, tweet deck. Well, with accounts that he can't he doesn't know exist and so he doesn't I can't block him and so he can still because I think Anyway, it's a it's a weird thing. Again, which is again why I think you know Phil Maroon is kind of weird on Twitter. He's just calm down, calm down. It's it's just weird. I mean, I, you know, I I've actually met Phil. He's a nice guy too, great guy. But and like you said, man, he just he's defending his brother, which you know they got to show a little respect there. But at the same time, I mean, man, it's just it doesn't look good. And you know, everyone walks on eggshells too on Twitter. It's kind of funny. How people always, they have to preface it with, you know, Pat seems like a great guy, but, you know, and it's it's because I think of Phil. And, and Phil's, again, he's just defending his brother, but I just don't think he's going about it the right way. And I think if he just kind of proved like, you know, hey, here's why I think, you know, Pat is doing fine if he's trying to defend him. But it's, it's you know, the, the insults, like the one he threw at you about, you know, I sure hope you're not paid to talk about hockey. <laughs> Dude, he's got two goals on the season, really. And at the time, it was one goal. You know, you know? I told him, did, did you see what I told him? I said, uh, well, I get paid to talk as much as, about hockey as as you get paid. Nothing. And so, you know, I you know, I, I, I'm not getting paid to talk about hockey. And you know what? Neither are you. So, <laughs> STF, STF, right? STFU, STFU. <laughs> Yeah. So I, that was, and I, yeah, so I, I don't, I mean, that was, uh, almost embarrassing. I don't give a shit. I mean, I, if I, if, if I think Pat Maroon's not playing very well, I'll say so. I don't give a fuck what Phil Maroon says. I uh, thanks. I, I, or I think he's playing well. I'll say so. I don't, I mean, I'm, what do I care? I don't, I don't know him. <laughs> um, why, why, what were you, what were your plans now? You have a game tonight, Jeff? Yeah, I had a uh, I had a nine fifteen game, and as I told you guys, I've already skipped two of my games with this team, and it's uh, for the ice session. It's it's four, I think it's four seventy or four fifty, and I'm like, man, I I can't skip every game when we have a podcast. I got at least play in a one. Gotcha. I figured it was a game. Yep. Right. Win or lose. Oh, uh, we lost, but you know, hey, I scored a goal, so that's all that matters. Personal achievements. That's all that matters with this team. Congratulations. Own Thank goal. you. Own what? goal? Yeah, own goal. It was not an own goal. No. You bow me straight? I did not bow me straight tonight. Bergevin. <laughs> Bergevin. We did, we did call it the Tarasenko, though, because I did. Uh, it was a perfect pass. I should have one timed it, but I had to cradle and then shoot. And uh, I, I was able to still score, but everybody's like, man, come on. You got to one time that. And I'm like, I man, I've been watching too much Tarasenko. Jake Allen's mask says in the YouTube chat, why is Billy D in a jacket? He didn't need to get dressed up for us. 
<laughs> work. Work. Work dire. Happy hour after work tonight. And uh, yeah, and he's uh, he's you know you you drink a beer and a jacket, you're making a statement. That's right. <laughs> and you drink a cucumber mint flavored seltzer water, you make a statement. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh, I think that should do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a long day tomorrow. All right. We're done. Uh, Jeff, thanks for joining us uh, this late in the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. And uh, I do want to point out, I don't know what our plans are for the week of Christmas, but uh, uh, we can discuss that off air. But I do want to say that I am actually, we, we mentioned it last week, Jillian Fisher, the uh, the wonderful lady that makes all the hilarious uh, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter videos uh, about the NHL. She will be on uh, for a recorded podcast. Uh, actually, we're going to record the day after Christmas. So um, she has to do it during the day. Unfortunately, she can't join us live. But, um, but yeah, she will be on. So I don't know. Again, we'll, we'll figure out what that means. It could just be a bonus episode if we – can do live next week. Uh, we'll, we'll discuss that here in a little bit and obviously tweet out what the plans are, but uh, I'll close just by saying uh, Merry Christmas to you guys. Merry Christmas to our listeners and uh, happy Kwanzaa. Mm. Happy holidays, Jeff. <laughs> oh, I'm not proper. Am I? So that's what I'm supposed to say. Happy holidays from channel five. <laughs> happy problem. holidays to you. Uh, I'm, happy I'm holidays trying to get, I'm trying to get five. some, some yeah angry tweets at us that i said happy holidays not merry christmas oh okay <laughs> See, we get plenty of those anyway it, co- it covers everything it does but it's you know it's war on christmas right and it's only war on christmas but it, there's no one yeah no, 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 no i'm not gonna get that whatsoever it's that's for our holiday it's podcast ridiculous we're talking <laughs> politics on the show so, <laughs> war on christmas is the people who uh, there's no one upset that people are saying Merry Christmas. There's people up, they're upset that people aren't Don't saying say Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, right? Yeah. Saying Happy Holidays. Yeah. Which they're trying to be inclusive, but I get it. But anyway. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe next week we'll do a show. So we'll see. Um, and the tweets we got, we, I didn't even look at Twitter. I think we're good. Yeah. That'll do it. For this week's episode of Let's Go Blues Radio, for uh, Jeff Ponder and Bill Day, I'm Kurt Price. That will conclude this week's broadcast. Until next time, everyone, let's go blues. Let's go blues. Ho, ho, ho. Uh, The Chiefs are at home tonight against Cyanusport at the War Memorial at 8. Good seats are still available. I think that went very well. Thank you for listening to Let's Go Blues Radio. Now take off, hosers. Well, there's 90 minutes of your life you'll never get back. Sorry. (laughs) St. Louis Blues, St. Louis Blues. Have you heard the news about our St. Louis Blues? They've only just begun. They're on their way to number one. Now there's no more blues for our St. Louis Blues. Blues are on the ice tonight again.